Hey guys, welcome back to Plan With B. If you're new here, welcome. So glad to have you. My name is Berlin and I do content on things about planning, organization, lifestyle, and more. Today, I just wanted to do a video on an overview of some of the planner sections that I think are just great to have in your everyday carry planner. Now, obviously this is going to differ from person to person because our lives are all different. We plan differently. We have different things going on. So some of us might not have just one planner that has everything in it. Some of us might have several different planners, different ones for the home, on the go, budgeting, finance, all different kinds. Um, I personally try to keep everything in one planner because I just love that kind of system and it works great for me. I do have like a filing system at home and I do things on the computer and I also use a digital calendar in addition to all this. But for my everyday carry, I try to keep everything that I need in it and nothing more. So in case you guys haven't seen any of my other videos like planner flips or anything, which would kind of show you what sections are in my, I just wanted to focus this video on planner sections and just go through. So if it's your first time watching, you guys can get some ideas. Maybe you guys are setting up a new planner or maybe you're new to the planning community and you guys just need some ideas for how to set your planners up or adjust things. So I'm going to go through my own planner here with some tips and tricks and just how I have the sections set up. I also want to mentioned that I am mainly a functional planner. The way that I use my planner personally is to stay on track with tasks and to get things done and to get things out of my head. So if you guys have a completely different planning system or maybe you aren't planning functionally, maybe you guys are interested in pretty planning or whatever it might be, um, you can do whatever you want with your planner. But what I'm going to be talking about is basically set up as a functional planner. So if you guys are interested in getting more organized, getting more stuff done, be more productive, then these are the kind of sections that I think are important to have in your planners. So the first section I have is my inbox section. I think an inbox section is absolutely crucial to a planning system. Now I have mine broken up into further categories here with more in-depth things in it because I do the getting things done method, which if you guys are interested, I have an entire video all about my inbox system and the getting things done method on my channel. However, even if you don't do this system, if you guys just have a section that's called inbox or brain dump and you just put some plain paper in there, that's all you need. You need some place to get all the ideas, the reminders, the tasks, the thoughts out of your head and onto paper because you will forget some of and them. And until you get them out of your head and onto paper or out of your head and just complete them, they will be swimming around your head until that point. So I think an inbox system is crucial and I have it as my first section in my planner all the time because right when you dive into my planner, the first thing I need to do is unload everything that's in my head. That is the first section and I have mine broken up into the next actions here and then um, projects right here. And again, if you guys want to see how I do my entire inbox system, have an entire video on that. So then next, this kind of plays on my inbox system, but I do think that it's also an important section to have, even if you don't have this fully detailed inbox system, is a project section. So things that require two or more tasks is a project. So basically you need a place to list all those projects because it's very daunting when you have these projects that you want to get finished, but then when you look at all the steps that you have to do to get them done, you tend to put it on the back burner and not get it done. You feel overwhelmed. So part of getting more organized and being more productive with getting your projects done is definitely to have a project section in here so that you can further break down your projects. So by the way, my inbox system inserts as well as my project inserts are from Perfectionism Prints. I'll link everything down below, products that I use, products that you guys are seeing, and inserts that you guys are seeing will all be linked down below for you guys to go check out. So this one is set up where you put the project on the left-hand side here, and then on the right-hand side, you put the steps, the tasks to get it done. I really like this insert for these because it gives you a place for three tasks, and most of my projects tend to be smaller projects. If it's a larger project, I will put it on its own project insert, and the way that I personally do this is I label all my projects by number so that I can then further break them down and have them all coincide with each other. So if I have a note sheet that's about project number three with additional notes and tasks to do, I can look at project number three in my project section and get all that information. I also like to, when I have those extra sheets, take a little page flag, label it project number three and stick it on so that I know that there's something in here that's also for project number three and I can find it. Then on my inbox section, I take 
project number three or whatever project it'll be. So let's see here. Project number four. Here's my steps. So the first step is to brainstorm ideas for my daughter's ornament for Christmas. So if I go to my next actions list here, you'll see one of my next actions on here is to brainstorm ornament. And I put number four because this came from my projects list, number four project. So basically now, I am already starting the process of getting the project done, but I'm doing it in little tiny segments over time to then complete the whole project. Because if I just have small steps here and there to get things done, I'm going to be more productive and actually get those projects done a lot sooner than if I were to just look at one project and go, oh my gosh, there's a lot that I have to do for this and I don't have the time today to do it. So when you see just those little steps listed out and you can get little steps done to then get to the bigger picture, it definitely works better. So even if you guys just take plain notebook paper and just write your project out and then the steps to get it done and then you have to just go step by step and get those projects done it's so helpful i promise you guys you guys will definitely be more productive with that the next section that i think is an absolute must would be the agenda section so whether you plan monthly weekly daily or all of them you want to have an agenda section or schedule section or something like that. Now I do use a digital calendar in addition to my planner. My planner, I tend to use the most for brain dumping lists, um, doing my projects, things like that. But I do like to also see my monthly overview in here and also have a weekly breakdown because I write tasks on that. So even though I'm using a digital calendar for my monthly overview, I still like to just see a snapshot so that when I'm doing my weekly breakdown, I just have everything in front of me. So you guys don't have to have every single section as far as like a monthly, weekly, and daily, unless that's how you plan and that's what works for you. What I like to do is be the most productive that I can without doing the extra work and taking up precious time doing the extra work or rewriting things and such like that. I like to just get them on my calendar, on my weekly spread, and then get them done. And when I'm completely done with the insert, it gets thrown away. I don't archive them unless there's reference material on so it. So I like to have a monthly overview because I like to see mine and my husband's work schedules and large events that I need to know, timed events, appointments, school closings, things like that. So I like to have them on a monthly scale. Now I have on my monthly digital calendar a lot more information, which I tend to look at all the time, but I do like to get a snapshot overview of my month in here so that when I am planning things out, sitting down, doing my weekly overview and all those things, I like to see that here in a monthly spread. These monthlies are also from Perfectionism Prints. I love them. And then I have a weekly section. I go back and forth between doing a weekly and daily because it really depends how busy I am. And I found that these weeklies, the way that they're laid out work great for me because I feel like I get enough room to write down tasks in them. And so, and if I don't get the tasks done on that day, if they're not day specific, I still just leave them there. I don't like move them to the next day or anything. I don't like to take up the time to do that. So I will just view my entire week and see, oh, okay, I didn't get this done. So today is Thursday, so I'm going to do it today. And then I'll just check it off when it's done. I don't need to actually move it down. But I like to have the weekly overview because there are some tasks that are day specific. And especially with like doing my plan with B content and stuff, there's certain things that I try to get on certain days and have some deadlines for that I personally have set for myself. So I personally just really like a weekly overview. These are from Perfectionism Prints. I also really like the ones by Creative Kata. There's so many different ones out there. I mean, you guys don't have to have actual laid out inserts. I'm just personally like a printable insert lover. I love all these inserts, so I love trying out new ones all the time. But you guys could just put some, you know, lined paper in here, label out your days. It's all about being functional, being productive, getting things done. You just need a place to have that information. So I think some sort of monthly, weekly, and or daily, depending on how you personally plan and what personally works for you is crucial in a planner. One of the next sections I'm gonna show you is something that I have always had in my planner. And I have not seen this in anybody else's planner before. This is something that I've just been doing for a very long time in my own planner. And I think it works great. So this is what I call my currently section. So this would be things that I need to get done that are relevant to right now. So if I have notes on something that I'm doing, I put it in here. If I'm filming a YouTube video and I have some little key points that I wanna talk about, that note would be in here because it's something that's coming up that's relevant. If I have a very important appointment that I need um, some in-depth 
details about, I will put an appointment insert in here, which this is actually a freebie on my blog. Um, I'll leave all the details down below about my freebies program, but I offer a ton of planner freebies. So you guys can check that out if you want. Um, but I put that information on one of these appointment inserts so that I can have further information on here. And I keep it in the currently section because it's something that's relevant to now. If it's not relevant to now and it's in the future, it's either in my project section or it's in my reference section or somewhere else that it's sitting. And when it's time for for it to be something that I need to pay attention to, it's in my currently section. So I personally think because I've been using a currently section for so long, I know it works. For and I encourage you guys, if you have not tried that, to give it a try because it truly does keep everything that's just relevant in one place for you guys. And it's just fantastic. I love using this system. So I also do have these little brain dump inserts by JI Design Studio on Etsy in here because I'm going to use these for my Christmas gift list. And I'm going to basically just put the name of the person in my family and then write some ideas that I might want to do for their holiday gifts. So that's why this is in here because the holidays are coming. We're already in November. So I have that in my current section because I need to start filling that out. So hopefully that makes sense. Just basically anything that's relevant to you right now is what would be in here. And I like to always have my currently section following my weekly slash daily section because I basically jump from being on the weekly spread and then I'll jump into my current section and see, okay, what do I need to pull out and use and get done right now that's in my current section. The next section that you guys might want to consider, depending of course um, what you guys do for a living, is having a work section. Now I do have an actual work section in here, right here, and I have told you guys several times before that I am a floral designer in the wedding industry and yes I do do a lot of paperwork for the weddings themselves but I also do a ton of hands-on because I'm designing so a lot of my work is hands-on and I don't need necessarily a whole planner section for my work so I do have this little section in here for little projects I might be working on and such but I don't really use this but I like to have a place for work because I might need to reference something but at my work itself I do have an entire system clipboard system filing system computer system there so I don't feel like I need this big section in my planner I only try to keep what I need in my planner I don't want to just carry around papers that are useless to me I want a system that works for me because at the end of the day this is to help me be productive and get things done Let's see how many times I can say be productive and get things done. It's probably going to be repeated so many times in this video. <laughs> so in addition to my work section, which you guys might need a large work section, depending on what it is that you guys do for a living, um, I do have a section for plan with B. Now, this isn't like a work section, but it is something that I put time and energy into. And with my content on YouTube, my blog, my freebies program, and my Instagram for everything, um, I do need a place to put everything. So I just like to have a spot in here to have everything that I, I need. I do have these inserts by Peanuts Planner Co. It's the categorized task list or note list. I don't remember. Um, and basically I just have my plan with B content and then I have YouTube blog, freebies, Instagram, and then a blank one. And basically anytime that I think of an idea that has to do with my plan with B content, I write it down on here and then I highlight the box here for where I want it to be posted because sometimes I want it on YouTube and my blog. Sometimes it's just for my freebies program. So then I highlight where I want it. And then when I look down the list here, I can see things that I still have to do. And once I actually complete it, I will just exit off. So I like using this section for my plan with B stuff. So no matter what you guys do for work or your side hustles or whatever it is that you guys do, I think it's important to have a section to kind of catch all that information so that you guys have a place to reference. So it. the next section that I think is important to have if you guys are parents is to have a section for your child or children. So I have a daughter, her name is Emma and she's five years old and she's in kindergarten so i have a section that's dedicated for her as a catch-all for anything that has to do with my daughter so i have like in here her school information contact information stuff like that and then i do have um this you guys have seen like a little schedule of her hybrid school schedule and then i just have like her school closings and half days printed off and then if she had like a really important doctor's appointment coming up or something in the future, like several months in the future, I would have that information in here. And then I would 
probably move it to like my current section when that week is here or possibly even leave it in here because it's very easy just to flip to your child's section and just see what's in here so basically anything that you guys have pertaining to your children you would want to put in here so that you have an area that you can go in you can jot notes you can reference things and it's just really important a section that i do not currently have in my planner but will probably be adding that i do think is worth trying out and i don't know if i will keep it in my planner or not but it would be a goals section i do think it's important to set goals long-term and short-term goals financial goals health goals um whatever it is that you guys are just trying to accomplish i think that it's important to have a section to reference that because when you see those things written on paper and you're reviewing those things and seeing them constantly it really does help you kind of stick to your goals and then you can further list out kind of like a project the steps to get to that goal so if you have like a goal and then you have some steps to get to that goal and then you can further break down those steps into little like project steps so that you can work your way towards those goals so whatever it might be maybe getting out of debt maybe buying your first home maybe getting your dream car um maybe losing 30 pounds you know all sorts of different goals out there that you guys would have i just think that that's a great place to put them and you can also have a section that's for health and wellness i also do not have that in here um, I use health and wellness apps, so that's something that I do track. However, it's just not in my planner. So if you guys like to see those things visually in your planner, that's a great section to have health and wellness, whether it be for your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health. Um, it's just a great thing to track those things so that you guys can be happy and healthy at all times. So again, I do use an app for that, but that would be an idea for a section in your planner as well. I also think that it's important to have a finance section. Now, this may not be a full-blown finance section. You guys might have a completely different planner for finances that further breaks it down into like your budgets and your spending trackers and your payment trackers and savings trackers and such like that but I have like a filing system at home that I use, so I don't have much in here as far as finances, but I do like to keep an overview, and I cannot show you guys this stuff because it's filled in, but I do like to keep an overview of our reoccurring bills that we have to pay monthly, just so I have a snapshot of what that looks like. I do like to have a monthly calendar in here that shows additional things that we'd be paying, so those variable payments like, um, uh, paying off a certain bill that you're not going to be paying off forever you might have a couple payments left or maybe you had to go to the doctor this month and you had to get an x-ray so you have a bill to pay for an x-ray coming up so i like to have a little overview of those as well so i can see and our payday so i can see which payday things are being taken out of i do also like to have an overview of payment trackers for current things that i'm paying off like you guys have seen the little um, page flag to pay my daughter's surgery bill she had surgery in the beginning of the year and i've just been paying it off in increments so i am still paying on that so i just have a payment tracker to see how many more payments that i have left on that as well as like my car payment my car is almost paid off so it's fun to see like your payments laid out and i just highlight off once that payment is made and then i can see how many payments i have left until it's finished so it's just nice to have a little finance section in here even if you don't keep much info it's great to have a little overview of like your recurring bills and things like that so that you guys can budget better and such you can also always put in your finance section your financial goals if you guys don't want a goal section you can always just have um, a sheet with your goals in the beginning as well as like health and wellness you can have a goal sheet in the beginning of a section like that as well the next section that i think is really important for your planner is a reference section so a reference section would kind of be a catch-all for things that you just might have to look at i try not to fill this section up too much because i have a reference folder in my evernote app and that's really easy to access wherever i am because it's on my phone it's on my computer and you know my husband can look at it i can look at it so it's nice to see that but there are things that i like to have in my planner printed off or filled in to reference so for instance um i like to have like this zone cleaning schedule that i made and yes you guys have been asking for it as a freebie and yes you guys will be getting it as a freebie very soon i'm in the middle of creating those in different planner sizes for you um so be on the lookout for that if you guys follow my freebie program but 
I do like to look at this because when I am doing my weekly breakdown, I will put down what zone that I want to clean that day. And then I just look at this to make sure I didn't miss anything because sometimes life is just chaotic and busy and it has been really crazy lately in my life. So I like to have a spot to reference it because it almost gives you peace of mind to know that you don't have to hold on to all that information in your brain and it's somewhere written that you can reference it. And that makes your brain relax. That's the whole idea behind the inbox system that I was talking about earlier. You want your brain to be able to just relax and be able to hold on to the important information and things that you don't need to hold on to have somewhere where you can reference them. So that is a reference section. It's really important to have a reference section. I believe I have just like our vision in here, some meal ideas for like quick, easy meals when I don't know what to make. And then the last section would be a note section. So in my note section, I just keep a bunch of blank note paper and inserts that I use in my planner, but you can use this as an actual note section where you just jot down notes. Typically a lot of my notes go into like my currently section because they're relevant to this time or they might go into like my daughter's section because it's about her or it might go into my project section if it's a project you guys see where i'm going with this so i just think it's good to have a notes or miscellaneous section or you can have like a collection section which would basically be like a collection of lists such as your books to read a packing list an address change list um, movies to watch things of that nature. And again, I use a notebook system in Evernote for all that stuff. I also use the Goodreads app. Um, I try not to write down every little thing that I don't have to. Again, my end game here is to be more productive and only have to fill in and do the things that I absolutely need to and keep in here the things that I absolutely need to because this little guy here is to help assist me on a daily basis to get my tasks done and be productive. So that is just kind of how I use my planner. And again, everybody's system is gonna be different, but hopefully these tips and tricks and how I use my planner sections have given you guys some insight and maybe helped you guys come up with some ideas and some new things to try, or maybe you guys are you know, using your planners differently or setting up a new one. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Maybe you guys also think of another section that is absolutely crucial to have in your planner. And if you do, leave it in the comments below because then we can all check that out and see other ideas for sections for our planners. But this is just what works for me. And I really encourage you guys to give it a try, do a system that truly works for you. So if you find that your planner is not working for you or you're not actually being productive and getting those tasks done or those projects completed, try to switch things up. Try not to worry about it being so neat. Try not to worry about it being so pretty and try to make it more functional and kind of just a place that you can brain dump and get things done and have a system in place so that you can further break those things down and get them completed. I am in no way, shape or form telling you guys how to plan. You guys of course can plan however you want and set your planners up however you guys want. They are yours and I think everyone's planning systems are fantastic. I love watching everybody else's videos. This is just what works for me so I just wanna put that out there. I'm not telling you guys that you guys need to set your planners up like this but maybe this gave you guys some helpful insights and ideas for how you might want to switch things up in your planners or set up a new one. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure that you guys subscribe and also follow me on Instagram. It's at underscore plan with B underscore. Remember that subscribing to my YouTube channel as well as following me on Instagram and over on my blog is very helpful so that I can continue making videos like and this. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.